Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. Today we're going to be accomplishing a couple of things. We're going to do a little bit of material gathering, which I'm sure at this point is pretty, pretty par for the course. At a certain point, once I'm like fully established, it's just going to be another chore like anything else. And you know, it's going to maybe seem a little bit mundane, but it's part of the process. So I'm going to include some of it. There's no getting around that. But uh, we're going to be collecting some clay so we can fire some more uh, shingles. And we're going to need some more copper because I was uh, running out and I couldn't make any more bronze. I do find a nice, uh, a nice surprise boon today though, which is going to be uh, exciting to share. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to make this pie and forget about it for the next couple of days. And then it's going to start to go moldy maybe. But uh, anyway, <laughs> make some mushroom stew. That's that's good. I, there didn't seem to be a model for the mushroom stew. I don't know if maybe that was a bug. Uh, here I'm kind of like checking out how the roof looks and seeing what I like and what I don't like. Uh, I have a basic kind of um, structure. We're gonna be I'm going to be doing a lot of planning here. Uh, in today's episode. So you're going to see me do a lot of things and then undo a lot of things and then redo a lot of things. It's a uh, an unfortunate example of, you know, uh, cut twice and measure once. Um, I just kind of didn't plan things out very well. I guess you could say my, my version of planning is to just start building and then see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, undo it. But uh, I've went, decided to go get some copper and it turned out to also be a very, very nice little uh, quartz deposit. And not just um, quartz, but also gold and silver. I'm not sure what gold and silver are useful other than making black bronze, but I will say they make black bronze. So I feel like maybe that's a, a, a weird kind of balance thing that they've, they've added in this game. I don't know if that's something you do in real life, but there it is. There's that big money native silver in quartz and native gold in quartz. So I definitely wanted to check that out. And I wasn't really sure at this point what they were useful for. Um, but uh, I, I can say that I've already started making bron uh, black bronze tools. Besides being really, really cool looking, they're also, like I, I think, faster than regular bronze. So that's kind of cool. Maybe that's just uh, maybe that's just like a placebo effect because I'm like, well, oh, it's black bronze. It's got to be a little bit cooler in some ways, but it definitely feels a little bit snappier. Um, I don't know if you maybe remembered in the last episode, but I uh, <laughs> just want to put this out there right away. I made a, a bronze chisel, and I'm so annoyed because I can't seem to find it anymore. So I, I think maybe I like um, quenched it, and then it just disappeared. So. Uh, a really unfortunate example of me just wasting bronze. I, I spent so much time looking for tin and then, you know, the, the idea that I wasted any bronze at all is just feels like a crime that I committed. But here we're, we're collecting lots of quartz. The quartz itself is going to be very useful because I'm going to need to make some glass. Uh, that is going to start happening in the next episode because I have sort of semi figured out how that works. And like a lot of things in this game, it is going to be a very slow process, which I do appreciate. But uh, yeah, we get some gold, we get some silver, and I get a really nice amount of both. Like I had like the perfect amount of both gold and silver. So I was able to make like exactly 800 units. Um, I can't, I think it's in this episode or maybe the last one, I decided I needed at least one more uh, ingot mold to make eight, you know, to, to have a total of eight. I think that eight ingot molds is kind of the perfect amount. Uh, it means that you don't have to, do any tricky weird ingot or sorry uh like ore balancing and you generally make exactly 800 units like the thing you have to understand when you're making alloys is that you have you need a, a certain small percentage of one material and then you need a large uh, proportion of copper generally so you can see that here here i'm playing with that balance quite a lot and in order to get the most out of the tin i basically want to have a higher ratio of copper to tin then you know that is possible um in order to get the bronze but no matter how i worked this out i couldn't get exactly 700 units it just like if i put one more tin it would go up to 750 units of bronze and if i took one out it would end up being like 650 or something like weird like that so that's hence why i decide here to make another ingot mold i think that eight is perfect because eight ingots 
uh, when you're when you're making a, a material is enough to keep you going for quite a long time. It's also um, not so many that it feels like you're starting to get crowded out by ingot molds. Um, I decided to you know do the 750 anyway since I didn't have the ingot mold, so I pour the 50 into the pickaxe uh, mold. I did say at one point I wasn't going to do math when it came to smelting materials and making tools, but I guess I ended up doing that anyway. I, I, I've, I've committed now to doing things semi-properly, so uh, you're welcome, uh, that one person who... And also, I guess, thank you for uh, letting me know that I should basically figure out exactly how much metal I need before I start smelting. But uh, I, I won't say I don't resent you just a little bit for making me anal retentive about yet another thing that I uh, cannot cannot n not unthink about, I guess, is, is, is what I'm getting at. So here we're getting to building the roof. And uh, this was a pretty long, uh, semi, like, pretty creative process. Uh, I wanted to have an interesting roof, and I think that the end design that I have going is pretty good. I think you'll agree that what we ha end up with is quite nice. Um, I think I needed to make another pickaxe. Oh, this is this is where I make the chisel. I make a bronze chisel here, and I actually, I guess maybe we'll have video evidence as to whether or not I just throw it in the water and then never collect it. But man, I, I, I cannot find it. I cannot find the bronze uh, chisel. I don't know what happened to it. I, uh, I've come to really like, um, appreciate the clay forming mini game or process in this game. Like I've figured out how to get the most out of it, how to quicken the process as, as quickly. I think the best thing you can do is actually just like, um, like use the copy tool from the last layer and then just like, uh, remove the parts that aren't the new layer. And it ends up being a very quick process. There's no real quick way of doing shingles. I've tried. I've tried very hard to um, sort of figure out an efficient way of doing this process, and I have an okay one now. But there's basically no good way. Shingles just take time, um, and I think I've almost got enough of them now at my current point to fully finish the roof. So here we go. We're, we're uh, as you know, I'm getting other things done, and we uh, get our pickaxe mold. And then I'm waiting on the second bar. I guess I don't, I'm not sure. I, I hadn't figured out what I wanted the second bar to be, but I kind of puzzle it out for a bit. And then we're doing a, a chisel. And I, I really am curious now, what, what happens to this chisel? Where does it go? Let's see. What happens to it? I throw it in the quench. And then what? I, I think I've already made the bronze pickaxe. So I think that is confirmation that I just threw it in the water and then never thought about it again, and it probably despawned. That is such a bummer. I hate I hate knowing that. At least I have closure, I suppose. But I'm getting um, the next batch of metals or alloys ready, the, the black bronze, which will happen in the next episode. Got to include at least in one episode. In each episode, me accidentally throwing myself off the roof. Uh, I think at least once today in, in this episode, I will kill myself by accident by throwing myself off the roof and and it, i know for sure in the next episode so you know making roofs is dangerous business is all i'll say i don't like i, I kind of wish they're um the one of the few things i miss from minecraft is having uh i can't remember what they're called but basically they are like a rafters block that makes it really really difficult they kind of function as ladders but they're a really easy block to to put up and then um you know tear down if need be and I really miss that for making uh, high structures, especially in a survival mode. If you're not working in, in like creative mode, like having to, you know, carefully balance yourself on, on a roof is a, is a real pain in the butt, especially when it's covered in snow. I do think it actually uh, helps to make it trickier. Well, I guess it helps to hurt, you know, but um, you, it's hard to see uh, in this process, like how many things I'm doing what I'm doing, what I'm taking away, what I'm putting up. Uh, and then I think at a certain point I realized that this whole thing is just not going to work. I have to make the roof taller. Um, I wanted, like, I was talking a little bit last episode and what I really wanted to have, what, what design elements I wanted the roof to include. And I wanted it to be, um, like, I don't know, 
interesting. I mean, interesting to look at, but also like an interesting design because I don't want it to just be one big triangle. I think this, uh, you know, this building looks warehousey enough without it uh, feeling like a warehouse. But I'm really working hard to make it not feel like just a total warehouse. So I, I'm, t I'm tearing things down, making sure that the desi design element that I uh, want to incorporate is possible. So that means um, making the roof a bit taller. That means I'm going to have more floors. And what I uh, basically envision is that I'm going to have like one tall second story because I, I like having uh, you know a tall um, working space. Uh, and then a very short cellar, and I'm actually going to go out of my way to make it very short by having um, more half slabs so that it feels kind of cramped. And I think that that works out for a cellar, um, but that also means that I don't have to light it because the thing I'm, I'm kind of semi-worried about is that I have all of the space to work with, but also I have to keep it lit. Otherwise, it's just going to become a monster spawner, and I don't really want that. The, the plan is um, to basically make the second uh, floor more or less the, the automation workshop. Um, so that means we're you know, going to be making the most out of the windmill once it's in place. I have done a bit of research on how the windmill works and how the different axles, gears, and stuff uh, fit together. It is a little bit tricky, and I'm sure I'm going to make many mistakes, but I think it'll be a fun kind of work in process, and I have an idea or a few ideas in mind for how to get get it all fit together and also very aesthetic. Um, but uh, you can see here, uh, there's a big problem flaw with building your house on a pre-established uh, amphitheater, which is that you didn't really have much say in how it was designed. And unfortunately, I discovered here that our, uh, our warehouse or cottage or whatever you want to call it is evenly sized like it has an even number of uh, amount of width which is I anyone who's worked in a, in a minecraft or a voxel based program or game knows why that's a problem because uh, generally it is better to make an odd width and length for your for your structures because it it makes it so you can uh, actually have um, symmetry not having symmetry is a pain um, if you have an e evenly spaced or having symmetry in an evenly spaced building is a lot more challenging and eventually you just kind of have to make compromises with your design, which I do end up having there. Um, I decided to have kind of a double peak roof for the, 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 the tall peak structure, but I've kind of grown to be okay with it. Um, it's okay. I, I have to just, you know, uh, not think about the, the fact that it kind of looks like a butt. That's that's all. I, I just got to keep reminding myself. It doesn't actually look like a butt. Don't don't look at it and think that it looks like a butt. Stop it. So, um <laughs> we're uh you know, this isn't this isn't really like me planning anymore. I have a a, a very good um idea. Oh, there's the death. Two deaths. Two deaths from from or maybe just no, that's the first death. Uh, two times I flung myself or three times I flung myself off the roof, but one actual death. So yeah, at this point I have a, a good idea of, uh, what the roof looks like, how it's being built. There's still mistakes happening here. Like I, I'm looking at this and realizing, in fact, this is the moment where I realize, uh oh, I'm building that portion of the roof on, on a different layer than I am this portion of the roof. So that means everything is going to be slightly mismatched that's the problem with not planning things out properly and you can see here when i actually build the roof over uh yeah it doesn't match so i'm gonna have to undo all of that and actually like build up the wall slightly so that it's even taller and it matches the other side i i guess it would maybe give the whole thing a bit more character if i had just like let things be mismatched and have kind of a descending roof a little bit but i don't know it doesn't fit with me i'd rather give a polished uh you know polished structure a i'd rather give a polished structure character than have to work around character that is going to consistently bother me so i don't know uh i guess it's just not my style to to you know try and make something make something work rather than like you know give give something a cool uh, style or aesthetic 
either way, um, I fix it and uh, we're actually starting to like actually slap down tiles um, and roof pieces. Like this is this is no longer planning. This is actually building officially. Uh, and I wanted to like at the end of this episode have kind of a working model. Like this is this is more or less what the full polished roof is going to look like. You can start to see at the end of this what what I had envisioned for the roof. It's not complete, but you know, uh, good luck completing this. As I was saying to my friend, I was like, I'm basically working on the Apollo 13 of roofs here. Like this was a really, really ambitious project and there wasn't, there was, you know, no way to, to finish this in one session. So uh, at the very least, if I can get like a, a, a working skeleton or a backbone, um, and then we can start to flesh it out over the next few episodes, and that is the best I can hope for. Um, it'll be, it'll feel really good once once I complete this because it really is something special already. Uh, so here's a here's an interesting part. I decide I want to give like I want the roof to feel kind of like proper or like it actually has some structure to it. Like it's it's not just like floating in the air. And generally, I think you would have like a load bearing post in the middle, but I don't really want to do that because I think it's going to look a little weird. So instead, I, I, I uh, settle for these kind of like posts that uh, give it almost like a rib cage look um, out of oak, oak logs, which I think looks really nice. And eventually I'm going to kind of work with it to to make it look a bit more proper. I don't know if you've noticed it, but like. I, I can only work for like a certain amount of time before my character starts freezing and they will start taking damage. So uh, you'll see me like every once in a while I was like, yeah, well, that's that's as much as I can do. I got to run back into the house and warm up before I can continue working on this. Can you imagine like just in the this is January in game, like in the dead of January, uh, like working on a on a structure like this. And I guess my dude has gloves. So the best he can do is keep his hands warm but even like that's that's the worst of both worlds because probably his hands are still cold but also he has gloves on and he has to do like you know structural work or, or building that seems like a nightmare to me so i'm glad i'm not this guy uh you know at least not literally um so this is uh this was the fruition of doing all of that wood collecting because I, I wanted to have some amount of wood incorporated and I'm not done yet. I The basic plan is to have no flat sides to this structure at all. Like I, I think that what makes a building look interesting is to have um, some kind of function on each side that, that looks like it's part of this, but it also uh, like it, it adds a bit of um, what you, I don't know if you've heard of greebling, basically, it adds a little bit of uh, bump and grit to each side so that it's not completely flat. Because uh, flat flat edges, flat sides are boring. You you wanna you wanna bump it out a little bit because that makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, but in any case, I think we're approaching the end of this design process and I've included at the end here I had a, I saw a good opportunity since the night was kind of finally coming to an end a time lapse of uh, the sun coming over the over the landscape and and uh, showing you what what this full design kind of finally looks like um, so I've included that here here it comes you can you can just sort of barely see the sun peeking over um, and my dude is freezing as well. Like I was a little bit worried by time lap lapsing this. It was just going to make the whole thing look really wiggly, but I think it looks okay. But anyway, I think the roof is re really shaping up. Unfortunately, it looks kind of like it's hanging in the air there because I didn't, uh, have a chance to give it like support. I didn't connect it to the top of the building, but that'll happen in the next episode. I've already run out of clay stone. So that's something I'm going to have to do. I have to go and collect myself some more of that, but that'll be also in the next episode. If you enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.